Hi, Gary. What's going on, Alice? Good, good. Um, not much. I just thought I wanted to take some time and talk to you because, you know, we've met, we met each other, I think about maybe a year and a half ago or so. And, you know, we're both in the same line of business. We both build homes, uh, design, renovate and sell. And it's such a fun thing. I think, you know, when we see other people doing it, we kind of go and join and make contact and just kind of like uh, give each other praise for what they're doing. And I think of all the people that I've met, you've been one of the people that has been really, really influential on me because as I see your progress, you're just kind of like knocking them down, you know, not knocking them down in a bad way, but just going through them and going, here's another one and here's another one. And you just have this like, um, you know, contagious energy about you. And I see, right. I see how much gratitude you have towards the people that you work with, how much appreciation and all that. And I know you're, you have a, a great amount of faith that goes with, you know, who you are. And so I just yeah. wanted to talk about that and bring that into, um, you know, as far as business is concerned and success is concerned, how much of your faith do you attribute to your success? You know? Absolutely. Well, thank you. I appreciate the intro, everything you said. And, and likewise, you know, uh, I, I've seen your project, came to one of your projects in, in um, La Crescent, I believe it was La Crescent, right? Montreal, uh, the same thing. Montreal, on, on community. I remember it's community, right? Right, right. Uh, yeah, it was, it was nice. You hit it out of the park. Um, thank you. And it, it also inspired me to, like, get into, like, the development side of things because I was more, like, fix and flip. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll, I'll tell a little bit about my story so we're not complete strangers. And for those that are watching, yeah, uh, you'll kind of get to know who I am a little bit. Yes. Um, so – Faith, let's start talking about faith really quick. Um, if it wasn't for God, none of this would be possible for me and what I've gone through. Um, I started this business with literally no money, nothing. I didn't have rich parents. Um, just ended up um, in a position where, you know, I, I kind of had to do something. I was tired, sick and tired of switching jobs. I have other businesses. I've had mortgage companies. Um, just, you know, when market crashed, I lost everything and one thing led to another and I, I was here stuck middle of the night. I was like, man, what do I do with my life? Uh, I just got married. Um, can, can you hold on, hold on a sec. Let me just pick something up really quick. Yeah. I apologize. I'm like multi triple tasking. So yeah, I, thank you. Appreciate you. Have a good one. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, I I was in the middle of just kind of like one of those deep questions, like what do I do with my life? You know, um, I had mortgage company like that failed when the market crashed. Yeah. And, and and now I'm in a position where I need to figure out what am I gonna do to support my life, my family, my wife, everything. My wife was uh was was pregnant and 20 she got pregnant we got married in 2013 i'm sorry 2011 she got pregnant in 2013 uh -huh. and my first deal i found off redfin i was like you know i need to find an investor that could make this deal happen every night i would pray ask god for wisdom hey you know god show me wisdom um give me give me give me something, you know, I, I want to get into flipping houses. I would watch the show flip or flop with Tarek, you know, I'm like, man, I could do this. I could see myself doing this. Um, and while they were filming the show, I was like, Hey, I would do this to the house. I would do that. Like my creative juices would just start flowing. Mm -hmm. And then I would kind of predict what they were going to do. And, and sometimes they would do what I kind of had in mind. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I think I have an eye for this. And what happened was one day it was like two or 3 a.m. I couldn't sleep. And I was like, what do I, you know, let me go on Redfin. Sure enough, found the property. It's like four blocks away from where I used to live. And I called the agent. I said, hey, you know, I'm interested in the house. Keep in mind, I have no dollar to my name. I owe a friend of mine 10 grand. Mm -hmm. I was between jobs, mortgage companies. And now I'm like, I really want this house. I told the agent, are you? I told the agent, I really want this house. Mm -hmm. And she said, look, I have 27 offers on the house. She's like, the best I could do for you, I'll put you up as uh, like 
second in line, you know, like backup. I said, all right, put me back up. And that house was a short sale. Mm -hmm. But two weeks later, she called me. She said, hey, the people couldn't perform. Do you want it? Mm -hmm. I said, absolutely. Absolutely, I want it. I made a few phone calls to people that I knew that I had money. I've networked while working at a different jobs. Yeah. One of the guys that I knew stepped up, bought the house. They made me a, a partner with them. We were going to split profits three ways. Long story short, a year later, they sold the house. It's about 180,000 profit. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting a pro I'm expecting $60,000 profit right. share. My right. part, I have a check written for nine grand. Wow. Heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Okay. So let's you manage the project yourself. A little bit, not too much, a little bit. I was here and there. Mm -hmm. um, I was more of the guy that found the deal. Right. And then I got really good at within that year time frame. I got really good at finding deals. Just really good at it. It's God's blessing for sure. Yeah. Um, and then we, we renegotiated the nine grand. I ended up getting 16 grand, $16,000. Wow. Very heartbreaking, devastating. You know, you, you kind of already count that money, what you're going to do, what you're going to spend, what you're going to pay off, you know, a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, what, within that year, I found two other deals mm -hmm. and I gave them to another investor because I didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket because I figured if this guy screws me over, Mm -hmm. I got too many deals with him, right? Of and, and sure enough, that's what happened. So I had another investor, a local guy in Glendale. Uh, I won't mention names, but a lot of people know him. Uh, he's a realtor as well. Um, he has a cartoon character out there. So mm -hmm. you could put the dots together. Yes. Um, no names need to be mentioned. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I ended up uh, giving him two deals. Uh -huh. Same thing. I had a percentage. Uh, cut mm -hmm. one of the deals he paid me nothing zero wow and it actually closed on my birthday uh it was crazy <laughs> well they you know me what? nothing you have to consider that a gift because yeah yeah, yeah it was a blessings uh in disguise so the other deal the way i got that one was um i, I negotiated a a re relist with the agent mm -hmm. i said you know i made a phone call Cause I used to call every day, like short sales. I would call agents. Hey, can I buy this house? Can I buy this house? Mm -hmm. And this agent said, look, the house that you want it, it's already kind of sold. But I said, well, do you have anything else I could look at? He's like, matter of fact, I do. So we ended up buying that one with, with that individual, with that, with that guy. Uh -huh. I was supposed to get a 20% partnership in the deal. Uh, and he was supposed to give the realist back to, to him. Uh huh. So it's time for, for the realist. He says, Hey, I'm not going to give him the realist. Hmm. I said, Hey, look, you're, you're screwing me over. You're killing my relationship with the guy. Yeah. And long story short, um, I was supposed to get like 20 grand. He ended up giving me 10 grand. Wow. Um, and you know, I met up with that agent that was supposed to get the realist. Mm -hmm. I said, look, here's what I got paid on it. His 10 grand. I'll give you half. I know the guy screwed you over and I don't want that. I don't want to ruin the relationship. It's not worth uh, any amount of money. Right. Um, he said, no, man, it's cool. Like you keep it. Like it's all good. You know, I know you, you did with whatever was right. He's like, I appreciate your, what you're doing. He's like, you keep it that day. Like we were having sushi. I remember, uh, we were having sushi together and we kind of say, well, you know what, why don't we like kind of the conversation? It was of course, God leading us. Mm -hmm. the spirit was the holy spirit was talking to both of us into a partnership so that person right now that got screwed is my business partner sergio that's how we met okay um and our first one we ended up buying three three houses um the first first investor that kind of screwed me over i was supposed to get 60 grand mm -hmm. his words to me towards like kind of the end not his words plus his attitude uh, and he came from like mommy, daddy money, you know, so it, it was his mom's and dad's money. Yeah. And his attitude towards me was like, Hey, you're never going to make it kind of with, without, without my money. You know, mm -hmm. I said, all right, we'll see, you know, God, God, I said, my, my, my father who is God has a lot more money than anyone on this earth. He anyway, provides. Exactly. I love that. Love that. So, um, fast forward after 250 flips later, um, 
we we bought a house like a couple months ago mm -hmm. in the same uh, community um, where that investor lives in. <laughs> and uh, it's funny the way I found out is during the I, I, elections of the president, there's a HOA. Mm -hmm. I was able to see who the people were on that list, and he was that one of the people over there. Um, yeah, funny how things turn around 180, and you know it, it, yeah. it's crazy. So with this business, it enabled me to literally buy time, buy freedom, have a lifestyle I've always dreamt of. You went, I went and bought my dream car. Mm -hmm. um, it was one of my things to do. I went and bought my Lamborghini. Um, oh, beautiful car. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it was fun. It was a good, good time. I had it for like six months, I believe. Mm -hmm. I ended up selling it, which was probably the best decision I've made. Yeah. <laughs> um, perfect timing. And here we are today. You know, we, we've, we're still doing flips, getting to development. Now my, like the flips are easy for me now. Mm -hmm. And um, we could... We want to get into development, like units, four units, 10 units, 12 units. Yeah. So my energy, my focus is, is, is switching to that side, you know, of, of building. And, right. Which, I, by the way, between you and I, mm -hmm. I do not understand construction. I'll tell you a funny story. When I met my partner, Sergio, mm -hmm. he's t we're looking at a house. He's like, hey, look, the stucco, you know, this and that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, looks, it looks good. And I had no idea what stucco was. I had no idea what fascia was. Right. I had zero idea of what construction was. Mm -hmm. But I did know one thing is um, I could learn. There's always room to learn. Of course. And the moment we put our ego aside mm -hmm. and allow those mentors that are placed in our lives mm -hmm. at that specific time to mentor us, mm -hmm. whether, an age doesn't matter. A mentor could be younger than you. Oh, of course. Right? A mentor could be older than you. It doesn't matter. What matters is the, the knowledge they have, the wisdom they have. Mm -hmm. And that comes from experience. And my partner had a lot of experience in building, flipping, real estate. He's a broker. So I was like, dude, I could learn a lot from him. Definitely. And sure enough, like we, we bought so many houses, flipped so many. On, I'll tell you so many stories where we thought we we're going to lose money. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, God, like we were questioning God. And like God spoke to us like, you fools, you have, you of little faith. <laughs> I blessed you to buy this house and you're questioning me right. that I'm not going to provide. Mm -hmm. We've had a house in, in Carson and I'm talking about like dozens of stories like this, but I'll give you one example. We bought a house in Carson. We were like, man, are we going to lose money on this deal? Why is it taking so long? And you know, all the typical questions investors ask. Yeah. And it never goes as you predicted, right? Never. There's yeah, always some never. kind of a challenge. There's always road bumps coming up. Yeah, yeah. So we were comping the house at five hundred thousand. Like mm -hmm. at five hundred, we might we might make like twenty grand if that. You know, it was a very small deal. Yeah. Because it just went over budget. A lot of things happened. City got involved. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, long story short, I told Sergio, I don't know, man. I have a feeling about this house. We put up a sign, for sale mm -hmm. sign before hitting the MLS. Cause we had to do landscaping. We got a call that came in. The people just sold their house in Torrance. Mm -hmm. They wanted to move to Carson. You get more bank for your buck. They ended up loving the house and they did an all cash offer, 550,000. Damn. <laughs> That's amazing. 50 more than you anticipated. Yes. We and I'm talking about, I have dozens of stories like this where we question God. God gives you, he gives you a little blessing. You buy something, a house, something. You might not know the end result. Mm -hmm. And then like the end result happens. But that trial, that, that journey you're going through, you, there's doubt. There's questions you're asking. You're doubting yourself. You're doubting, why did I even buy this? Why is, why are this happening? Why is it taking so long? That's but then God stepping in though, right? That's your ego stepping in thinking that yeah. you know everything and you don't, yeah. you know, you don't, not only that, you have no control of nothing. Yeah. The exactly. only thing you could control is your mind, how you, how you respond to certain things. Right. And I, I choose to respond in a positive way and I appreciate every difficulty, every opportunity, mm -hmm. because when you don't have difficulties, you're not going to appreciate opportunities. Of course. You're not. 
Yeah, that's um, the way you learn is by experiencing contrast, right? You experience something negative and then you're like, oh, what's, you know, what's that teaching me? Or what's the opposite of that, you know, negativity that I've experienced? And then yep. the job is to not dwell in that negativity and move toward, towards, you know, what you want. Yeah, so, yeah. So we, we question a lot of times of God, what he's doing for us. And then, but God doesn't oppose effort, right? No. You have to put in the effort. Right. And God will meet you and he'll bless you if it's his will. If it's not, it's not his will, you cannot, if, you're, if I'm a size 10 and a half in, in my shoes, no matter what I do, I'm not going to fit in a size six. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. Sure. If it's God's will, it'll happen. If it's not God's will, it won't happen. No matter what you do. And if you try to put your feet in a size six shoes, if I try to do that, I might make it fit, but I can't walk for too long. You're going to fall. You're going to fail. And then you're going to use that as an excuse. Oh, see, you know, God didn't bless me. No, God gave you so many messages, so many clues, so many ways of you to get out of that deal. But you let your ego get in the way of, 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 of the blessing of what God was trying to provide for you. Exactly. And, I, you know, I've had similar experiences where uh, my, my whole thing when I started doing this was not, oh, how much money am I going to make? You know, I just wanted to find people that I enjoyed working with because I thought it's the whole experience of creating, you know, of, uh, and my whole thing was I really love making these houses beautiful for the buyers that are going to come live in it and enjoy. That was my mindset. And I tried to do everything when it came to the design. Like if I was living in there, how would I yeah. like, it was never about saving the money. And then yeah. I always thought I want a group of people that that's like competent in what they're doing, you know, and you found um, Sergio and I found my contractor who's amazing at what he does too. And it's, you know, and there was a lot of people on the side that kept saying, oh, you don't know what you're doing. Find people that do cheaper work. You'll save more money. But I always saw the bigger picture, which yeah. was, I'm not chasing the money. You know, yeah. I have, and, and I believe in, in um, you know, source and energy and God. And I know that if I do good by, you know, this higher power that's within us, then the higher power knows this and recognizes this, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm, you know, when I do something good for someone else, that's the energy that I get back, you know, Absolutely. And it, it's, and at the end of the day, it's not just doing it for the right reasons. It's how it makes me feel on the inside. You know, I'm able to sleep at nights with a clear conscience and I love what I do. And it's like the positivity, the whole, uh, you know, what's created basically what humans are about, we're all about good, not doing evil. And it's yeah. that, you know, sometimes we do encounter people like your previous, uh, you know, uh, partners that don't yet understand this, you know, and they go about, you know, chasing the money and yeah, it's not that they won't make money. They will. But at the end of the day, are they really happy? Do they sleep well at night? Do they have that, that, you know, peace in their heart? Do they have that knowing that they've contributed to others well being also, you know, and when you do that, then, then, you know, it's like, I think there's no greater reward um, than knowing that, you know, you've done well at the end of the day. Absolutely. And this is a perfect transition. I'll tell you why I got into flips myself. Mm -hmm. um, you're absolutely right. You cannot put a price to peace of mind. You can't. Uh, it's priceless uh, to people that understand it. To people that don't understand it, they might have a lot of money. But I have noticed that people that don't understand peace of mind, that mm -hmm. do have money, there's other aspects in their life that it's not working out. Exactly. You know, There's not they have the trust balance. issues. They have all kinds of issues. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not balanced. You know, um, you, you cannot, you have to have a balanced life and money is one part of it. But there's, there's so many other parts to that puzzle where if you're failing, mm -hmm. you're going to be a miserable person. Exactly. Your relationships um, don't thrive, you know, and what's more important than having uh, healthy relationships. If you're not comfortable, like, let's say you have a million dollars or 2 million or 10 million, whatever it is. But if you, if you don't have anyone to share it with, if there's no happiness, there's no harmony, you know, in your home, then what's the point? So it's, you know, that's the whole point of having balance, having uh, the mindset of the higher one, power guy. One, one sec, Melanie. I absolutely, hold on. Sure. Okay. Go ahead, take your Sorry. Time. Um, but I, I'm completely with you, completely with you. Yeah. So the reason I got into flipping houses, it was kind of, uh, it was kind of a, a thing in my life where 
I was like, you know, what, what do I do with my life? You know, I got into flipping houses. Um, you know, the way God kind of changed me in my life, I was kind of, I was that fixer upper. <laughs> I was that person that needed to get fixed. Right. That's and how I look at it too. We're always all, all under construction, aren't we? Oh, you're thinking up there. Always. Yeah. Always. <laughs> yeah. I see always. that myself too. I've grown so much throughout the years and I've only been doing this for four years. So it's, you know, not that long of a time, but I feel like I've grown so much and I've learned from each project so much, you know, and it's, it's, I, I look at myself as being under construction, but I feel like I'm building, it's the foundation that has to be strong, you know? Um, absolutely absolutely like home, if the foundation is strong then everything else you know falls into place and it's a it's a much better house it's a much sturdy just like us then we can get over whatever it is that we need to get over absolutely so that's exactly what happened to me and when i was buying these homes i i didn't want to skip you know corners I, didn't wanna, I was like you know what no matter what price point it is Everyone deserves a nice house. They're going to pay money for a house. It has to be nice, especially if someone's fixing it. And I would see a lot of flippers just do Mickey Mouse jobs. Like they would, right. like, you know, we call it, uh, uh, there's a terminology, uh, lipstick on a pig, right? Mm -hmm. They would do that. And it just, it didn't feel right to do that. That to me became a money chase. Right. You know, and, you know it's funny. One of the houses that I did was in West Hills and I really like that's one of my favorite houses that I did. It was beautiful, gorgeous, like up on a hill and there was peacocks all over the property. And I remember when we listed it, um, a guy walks in and he's like, oh, I do the same thing you do. And he goes, oh, you've just and he kept walking around the house going, you've spent too much money on this. You spend too much money on that. And he kind of like started chuckling under his own breath. He's like, oh, you'll learn. You'll learn. You got to save money. You can't do that because then you're not going to make any money on that. So after, you know, and I wasn't going to argue with him, but after he left, I said, you know, the only thing I could think was, I kind of feel sorry for you because you don't have any joy in what, what you do. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it and, makes and me feel sad for him. Absolutely. So the, the, the thing with flips, what I have learned, as long as you put up a, a good product, mm -hmm. can you hear me? Yes. As, I as long as you put up a nice product, people fall in love. The first 10 seconds, as soon as they walk in, they made a decision. I, I mean, not even walking, just right? uh, the pictures, uh, red fin, you mm -hmm. know, they already fall in love. When you could have someone fall in love with your property before they even see it, mm -hmm. um, price really doesn't matter. Honestly, yeah. price don't matter. Because the difference between uh, zero and 50 grand on mortgage payment you're talking about twenty, thirty dollars, right? You're talking about very little bit. You're not. It's not crazy where people are like, no, nah, you know, I can't afford that. So exactly. it's not a matter of price. It's a matter of want. And mm -hmm. once someone wants something, price is an issue. Absolutely okay. not an issue. It's human um, I, I bought my place. Mm -hmm. What's that? I said human beings are emotional. People. You're saying human beings? Yeah, everything yeah. based on emotion. You know, yes. buying, selling, all of it is, is mostly based on emotion. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So what I did was when I came to flipping houses, you know, I was like, all right, I want to make this house nice. What do most people want? They want a nice kitchen, nice bathroom, right? Mm -hmm. and, and give them a few wow factors. And if you could do that and still have it priced right, yes. it'll sell. No matter what you do, it will sell. Exactly. So, Every flip we took, we had that in mind. A few wow factors, priced mm -hmm. right, will win. So up until like a month, two month and a half ago, like I said, we've done over 250 flips. I've never lost any money on any deals. Mm -hmm. um, about a month ago, month and a half ago, we had a house in Granada Hills. We ended up losing a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. um, and not to make excuses, but just things happen with the t uh, previous owner. They stayed in there too long and coronavirus hit us. Yeah. Before the coronavirus, there was, there was the fires in Granada Hills that hit us. So we got hit with a bunch of things mm -hmm. uh, once. Bought it at such a discount that we didn't prepare for all these things that were going to happen because no one knew, right? Um, right? We still managed to 
sell the house mm -hmm. and we lost money. We only lost $2,600. Okay. Yeah. It's not much, right? In, in a flipping business, it's nothing. It feels like we've made money. But it, what it did is it also, my, my, one of my friends, uh, kind of like a mentor said, look, Gary, you've been hitting home runs 100%. You know, you're a 10 out of 10. It's like, mm -hmm. it's all right. You, you, you did one mistake, one, one deal. Even nine out of 10, you're still good. Definitely. Or you're five out of five, you know, five out of 10. Um, so don't worry about it. He's like, don't let that get to you. You know, it's fine. Um, he's like, you've done well. And um, the moment you start looking at like numbers and money, this, that, you're already losing. I agree. Um, I agree. Same thing happened with me with uh, my last one. I ended up losing a little bit of money on it, but you know, and I was, I thought it was going to turn out much more different than it actually did. Uh, the whole selling process. But, but then looking back, I was like, you know, I, I realized everything that I did that was not the way that I should be moving forward as far as investing so much into that and, you know, uh, thinking that it was such a huge deal when it actually was just another house that I was doing, you know, yeah. and then looking back, I learned so many different lessons. And now with my next one, I figured out different ways of doing it where it's much more beneficial to me. So it's never a loss. Even if it's a monetary loss, then you just have to look at it as how much wisdom have you gained? You yeah. know? So, you know, what, is, what, is, what is a loss is um, when, when kind of off subject, when, when kids go to college and they get a degree and they don't do anything with that degree, that's a loss, right? Yeah. That's just loss of time and money, everything. Right. So us, this is school. We go to school, we learn something, mm -hmm. uh, we invest money, we get most of our money back. Um, and if we lose a little bit of money, it's fine. It's like, it's, it's paid, it's paid schooling, right? Uh, which, which is fine. <laughs> and in the bigger scheme of things, as far as God and the universe is concerned, it's never a loss because at the same time, we've contributed a beautiful house to another family. That's going to yes. be enjoying yes. it. Yes. Amen. When you you're it that way, it's never a loss. It's always never a loss. Win, you yeah. Know? You're, bl you're blessing another family. Exactly. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Uh, and, and the good thing is there's, you know, projects are right after each other. So there's always opportunity to do better, bigger, you know, next time. So, absolutely yeah absolutely well i don't want to keep you too long gary i know you know you're busy you're on the road um, no no you're good i i just i'm good now i i'm dropped i have workers working i just dropped off some food um okay. but okay. i have time now i'm good so okay perfect um yeah so, uh, um, one sec let me just make sure that I'll... sure life of a real estate developer <laughs> Sorry, just uh, yeah, that's, okay. and that's another thing I've learned. Treat the people you work with like family. Yes. Um, don't treat them. Don't treat them like I've seen a lot of flippers mm -hmm. treat their workers or contractors like, excuse my French, like animals, like like yeah. they owe you something, mm -hmm. like they're beneath you. That's the worst thing you could do. That's the biggest mistake people make, you know. Um, they think that they're a big deal just because they're doing what they're doing. You know, I was talking to my contractor this morning, actually, and he told me a story. He's, he's a really good guy, so honest. Um, I mean, I've worked with him ever since I've been doing my homes, and he's, he's the most reliable person that I can think of. And, you know, he was working with someone, and he gave him cash, and, and I guess he, he had been short a little bit. So he had told the guy, hey, listen, you know, it, maybe you didn't count right. And the guy had said, well, that's your problem because, you know, next time you should learn to count in front of me so that there's no. So he basically said, you know, go away. I'm not going to give you the difference, right? So no but what way. he doesn't realize is you don't do that to people because guess what? Now that this guy's doing work for you, is he going to do the best job that he could for you? No you way. Know? Is he going to have the same uh, attitude about, you know, maybe not charging you more or, you know, it's, it's like it, it all comes back to you one way or another. You and know, that, exactly. I was going to say not they're They're going to make it up somewhere, right? Exactly. I mean, they're going to make it up somewhere. You, the people you work with, you treat them with love, respect. Like right now, I just bought my guys lunch, mm -hmm. uh, and I enjoy that. I enjoy. I, I sit down with them. We have lunch together. We joke around. We laugh. Yeah. We hang out together. Um, I like one of the guys that's installing my floor. He's a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, we hang out even outside of this. I knew him before I even hired him. He was my friend first, mm -hmm. then I started hiring him. You know, for certain jobs. Right. Um, and I, and I love giving back. Like one of the guys that's here, Carlos, our contractor, mm -hmm. um, I partner up with him on one of our deals. Um, he made double the amount that he was going to make as a contractor. Right. So he was excited about that. 
you know you just you treat people with love respect you're you you it always comes back to you always it's, comes back to you. it's such a beautiful feeling when when yeah. you treat people with love respect you care for them you serve them they'll do more for you out of love than mm -hmm. out of fear when someone fears you and they they can't stand you but they have to work for you mm -hmm. they'll work for you yeah but they're not going to get as much done as if someone loves you and respects you they'll do more for you exactly you know, and that's when people don't understand when they have love in their heart, that's the God source that's in you. You know, when you don't, when you have fear, that's like lack of God, that's lack of source. Right. So how is that going to, how is that going to go well at all? You know, it's, it's like, those are the people that are very short sighted when they don't realize this, you have to see the bigger picture. There's more at stake than what's happening right now in this very moment. And the most amount you can make by treating people badly or thinking about your profit right now here and there, you know? It's, it's the, it's with the energy that you're creating. You know, I always see, I always have a vision of the future, what I'm going to create. And that's never going to be me alone. That's going to be, I, I'm going to accomplish it with a team of people, you know? And if you don't value the people that are around you, then you, it's, it's going to be pretty lonely when, if, if, and when you actually get up there. So, it's, Absolutely. you know, it's, it's, I always say my tribe and I always think of it that way too. It's like my tribe of people. You know, we have very, very similar um, output in that I have a group of guys we work with. A lot of these guys that um, are, I call them partners, that mm -hmm. partner with me, were students of mine. They became students um, and then, you know, they, they partner up with us and they work at the office now. I tell them, guys, this is a long, long play. We got to figure out what our, or what our end game is. If our end game is to keep doing flips, mm -hmm. that's what your end game is. But I told them our end game should be creating passive income. Exactly. And flips is just a vehicle to get us the money we need to buy income producing properties, right? Yes. Multiple and I, I, of income. Yeah. And I, I, and I told them we've gotten pretty good at flipping houses. I could show you how to do that. Mm -hmm. Eventually, five years from now, whatever the time frame is, whatever God, what God says, uh, I'm enjoying the journey. Whatever. So whenever that time frame comes mm -hmm. i'll enjoy the journey but whenever that time frame does come i told my friends my partners i said i want to come to you guys and say hey look oscar sergio how whoever the guys are i need all of us we're going to put in a million dollars each we've mm -hmm. made it through real estate flips we're going to put up money let's go take down this 100 units 200 units let's yeah. do it together let's do it as a group because doing things as and to me Ever since I was a kid, it's always about creating memories. Right. I like having fun, create memories. Because we'll never talk about a year ago how much was in our bank account. But we will talk about a year ago the conversation we had on this Zoom call. Mm -hmm. and, and, and with that, with that um, to me, is, is the most important thing, creating memories. Experiences, um, right? Experiences, yeah. So I, I like... I went to, a few years ago, we went to China with my partners. We went to Thailand. We've gone to other states. Sometimes we, just to create experiences, we'll buy a flip in another state mm -hmm. just to fly out there, <laughs> enjoy the city, mm -hmm. yelp a bunch of restaurants, and have fun, make money and have fun. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, I love that about you, Gary. Like, you're just so, like, throughout the whole thing you're enjoying. And I see your posts, I follow you on Instagram, of course. And it's just, you know, you're enjoying the whole thing so much as you're doing it. And it's never like, oh, you know, I can't wait till you get, and you're never stressing, you know? And it's not ever about the end product. It's the whole process. It's the whole journey. And it's, you know, and the enjoyment of it. And, you know, you have this mind that knows the secrets of success, you know, and it's all to stay calm. It's all never to stress. Not that we don't have stresses, but we know how to you know, manage them basically. But um, yeah. And it's One because thing. you have this faith in your heart. And I know that that's, that's a, that's a huge factor because exactly. you have this trust in the unknown that everything is going to work out at the end and you don't have to control every single circumstance and every single, you know, thing that comes up because you just, you have this, maybe it's called a blind faith, but it's, it's a faith in uh, the, the well or the, the knowing that we're always protected and we're all taken care of well being. Well, for me, it comes from just literally experience, not, not only experiences, but what I've gone through with my life and going from like almost dying a couple of times where I, I was going to get, 
I drowned once. I don't know what happened um, from cops almost killing me to uh, avoiding a car accident, Mm -hmm. a big car accident, uh, to telling one of my friends during high school, I'm not going to go lunch with you that day. And he gets in a car accident. His, His cousin in the passenger seat dies on the scene. Oh I've got, I've, 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 I've seen how God has been in my life mm-hmm. and I've always knew something was there. Right. But then when I was 21, 22, I started going to church and for the wrong reasons, you know, I, I, for this girl and long story short, I ended up giving my life to God. I'm like, dude, God, you've been there since day one. You've been whispering at me and sometimes yelling at me, but I've been blind and not mm-hmm. seeing you. But now I see my my, I've, my 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 eyes my have been revealed to what you've been doing in my life, and right. I appreciate it. And I kid you not, like just so many deals where we thought we were losing money. God just said, "Nope, here it is. Here's an extra fifty grand, thirty grand. Wow. I'll That's- give you this crazy story. I, I you're gonna is gonna it's it's mind blowing. So. One of my, pa- I, I would go to this church. One of my pastors called me. He's like, hey, man, like our, our church is struggling. We want to help out some people. Can you help us out? I'm like, no problem. I showed up, have a checkbook. And, and I didn't even ask how much. Mm-hmm. In my mind, while driving there, I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to donate like 500 bucks, okay? Mm-hmm. I get there. Man, the Holy Spirit just took over my feelings, my mind. And I wrote a check for $2,000, okay? Two grand. I gave it to him, forgot about it. Yeah. At that time, I had so many properties. I probably had maybe like 13 grand in my account. I can't remember. Just, mm-hmm. I know it wasn't much. Yeah. Um, I forgot about it. I didn't even tell my wife. Mm-hmm. Literally forgot about it. A month later, I get a phone call. Hey, Gary, there's this deal. Do you want to buy it? Four units, Lamar Park. 850,000 has foundation issues. I went, we saw it. I made a few phone calls before we entered escrow. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew this Persian Jewish guy that would buy, was buying units in the area. Mm-hmm. I ended up negotiating him to buy for 850,000. Mm-hmm. We got into contract for 800,000. I'm like, worst case, I'll just wholesale it to him, make 50 grand. Okay. Right. We ended up renegotiating the price. There had issues. There's more issues with the house. We ended up renegotiating. We ended up getting it for seven hundred fifty thousand. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. I told my partner, I'm like, look, if this guy that's very savvy and knows his numbers like crazy, without seeing the property, offered us eight hundred fifty thousand, and he's a low baller, mm-hmm. um, I know we could probably get more money. Man, I kid you not, this house was beautiful. It had so many characters, but it had issues. Right. Um, we just had so many projects. Man, God spoke to my heart, said, just put it on the market, list it, you know, see what you can get. We ended up doing an off-market type of marketing. Mm-hmm. We closed escrow. You will not believe them now, I tell you. 1.15 million. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's amazing. We netted net three hundred thousand dollars on that deal. Did you? But did you do the, any work first or no? Zero, Just nothing. Okay. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Then when it closed, I remember I was in Armenia. Mm-hmm. Had one of those aha moments. I was alone. I was out there. Uh, we were fishing. Mm-hmm. My friend. We were fishing, and I had one of those alone moments. And God spoke to me. You know when everything's silent and. Yes. You have these thoughts and yes. I'm hearing the breeze of the, of the lake and the, and the wind and just, I'm alone, you know, I'm in Armenia. Mm-hmm. And then God like soft voice spoke to me, said, thank you, my son. And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm like, what, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And then it came to mind that I ended up blessing like this church with money. Mm-hmm. And I gave to the church, I gave sure. money without even thinking. Mm-hmm. And then God gave me three hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and and it's not like I'm a business partner with God. I'm not. I'm not saying give money to the church to make money. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is listen and let the Holy Spirit guide you. 
mm-hmm. I've, I've another, I have a lot of stories like this. <laughs> I when love I've, them. That's amazing. I just, that, that inspired me and gave me goosebumps. I love that. I appreciate that. So I had this other deal when I first started, this is during my beginning stages, agent gives me this deal. And, and, but when I talk to people, I talk to them, like not on a surface conversation, like deep conversation. Hey, what's going on? How's, how's your family? Like, you know, yeah. and I open up just authentic, you know, just being real with people. Cause I know people have a, uh, the first, like, I don't know, month, two months, three months, whatever the time frame is, they put up a show. A lot of people put up, put up a show, but when you get to know them, you get to know what their problems are, what their challenges are. And if you could help them, genuinely help them, help them without no financial gain, like help them. Cause everyone's struggling. Everyone's battling something. Yes, right. Um, so I talked to this guy. I said, Hey, what's going on? You know, you seem kind of stressed. What's happening. He's like, man, I, you know, no one's asked me. He's like, my dear friends don't even ask me this question. He's like, he's a realtor. He's like, man, I'm, I'm losing my house. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah. And we were buying a house in front of his house. Mm-hmm. He lives across the street in Carson. We got an amazing deal on it. Mm-hmm. I said, what do you need? He's like, man, I just need a thousand dollars to pay off some of these things and I'll be, I'll be fine. You know, wow. I'm like done deal. Like what, where do, you know, let's meet up. I got you. Yeah. We were in escrow. We haven't even bought the house yet. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's like, he's like, as soon as I make commission, I'll pay you right back. I'm like, yeah, don't worry. Like, it's fine. You know, it's cool. Yeah. Um, no contracts, nothing. I didn't sign any, you know, it's, it's fine. Um, I gave him a thousand bucks. We closed, we made money. We, we did really well on that deal. Mm-hmm. He approached me later on. He's like, Gary, you know what you did for me? Helped me out a lot. He's like, I have friends for a long time. They would not even do that. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I have t- like a lot of respect for what you do. I'm like, dude, it's not even me. It's God. God kind of spoke to my heart. I helped you out. Like all glory to God. I, I'm just, yeah, just a little, little nothing, you know? No, uh, you're an extension of God. That's how, that's what I believe. Yeah. I believe we're all extended. Yeah. But you know, I, I definitely don't want to get any credit because um, it's a very thin line when you, it's like walking on eggshells. There's a, when I just don't want to get any credit when it comes to God's blessings mm-hmm. because I know it's him. If I take the glory, mm-hmm. that means I'm in control and I'm not in control. It's, it's all him. Yeah. It's, he's in control. Um, and there's a lot of stories like that, helping people and just, it all comes together, you know, it blesses you and your family, blesses you and, and your business. Definitely. I, and I see so many people, especially in our community, in our Armenian community, mm-hmm. They always want to one up you or or try to yeah. have something over you and 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 beat you and compete with you. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you guys have it all wrong. We gotta love Thank each you. other. We gotta care for each other. If you're doing well, God bless you. Let me see how I could help you out more. And I know in return you're gonna help me out, right? Mm-hmm. If if I'm doing something and and I know you could contribute something, let's build something together, bigger. You know, let's help more people. I'm all about like team and helping and doing bigger things. Right. Um, so many people, they have a, they'll have the secret sauce or, you know, they'll have the keys to a gold mine and they don't want to share. They have this hoarding mentality. It's like the Soviet union communist mentality of not helping people. Oh no. If I help them, it's, it's going to take away food and thing from my table. And so silly. I always think there's so much to go around. It's such a huge, like, big planet my god there's so much for everybody you know that's the challenge our people they don't live in abundance they live in this no, communist not- soviet union it, it, we lack abundance you know mm-hmm. and i and i tell my friends that sometimes have this this mindset i'm like dude how many cars can you drive in one day one exactly how many steaks can you add can you eat in a day one mm-hmm. it's fine you don't need to hoard you don't need to have all these like uh, trying to throw people off and make millions and th- which is fine is great, but be human, love people, care for people, give back, you know? And, and if you have, yeah, sorry. What was that? 
I was going to say, right. you know, when I see people doing the same thing that I'm doing, when I look at the homes that they've created, it makes me happy, like to see what great work they've done. You know, I always go and compliment. And I'm like, wow, what can I learn from you? You know, it's yeah. not about, oh, what? Look at my house. It's my house is just as good. You know, it's never anything like that. I always think of it as like, if they're at a better place than I am, what can I learn? Because, you know, it's not that, I mean, I think everyone has their level and it's not like they're taking anything away from me. You know, it's, it's not because there's enough to go around for everyone. And you're so right about like having the abundant mentality rather than the lack mentality. And unfortunately it's the way sometimes they're, they're brought up and they're conditioned that way. But there comes yeah. a point where you see if that's not working for you, make the changes, you know, see that that's not the better way to live. Because like I always say, at the end of the day, when you go to sleep at night, how are you feeling? What's, what are the emotions, you know, are you going to sleep thinking, oh, I, you know, with all these negative emotions or do you sleep in peace? Do you have like love in your heart and you know that you've contributed during the day and you know, you're going to wake up in the morning and contribute even more to society, you know, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's all of us contributing to each other, creating that energy of love and abundance in everyone. You know, that's, you know, that's, what, uh, that's what being human is about. You know, G Jesus, um, not to get too much into it, but Jesus did one of the biggest um, things for humankind, mankind. Mm -hmm. Man of God, God himself on earth was washing people's feet mm -hmm. just to give you a perspective exactly. on serving people. Yeah. God himself washing someone's feet. Because he saw that we are all alike we are all one we're all the same you know and it's when the ego comes in when you separate yourself is when there's <clears throat> when the conflict starts yeah. you know the whole separation thing that's what starts yeah. everything that's the reason people get into wars they, they start hating each other they think they're different but we're all the same at the end of the day and, you know and, what you want and, for your others is what you get for yourself and the enemy knows how to use the ego to his advantage definitely um the you know, the greatest commandment, God said, love your, en uh, love your enemies, love your neighbors, mm -hmm. you know, as you love yourself. Um, he also said, you know, love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Right. You know, when you give back, you're going to get back. Whatever you put out, you're going to get back. Um, exactly. And Tom, and I know you mentioned stress. I heard this a long time ago when I was 18, no, nine, no, sorry. I was 20 years old. I heard this. Someone said, you know, you, you guys are taking real estate, you know, stop stressing, you know, stop stressing with real estate. He's like, do you know what stress stands for? I'm like, no, what does it stand for? He said, S-T-R-E-S-S. -S. He said, S stands for stop. <laughs> and the rest letters, I'll tell you, stop taking real estate so seriously. Stress. <laughs> People are stressing over stuff. They have no control. Exactly. Zero control. Yeah. The only thing you control is how you you know, how you react to certain things. You know what I started doing, Gary, which is like, uh, it's been working really well for me. Like in the mornings when I wake up and I'm like, I have a to-do list, you know, I always have a to-do list. And then I've started separating it into two columns. One is what I have control over. The other one is what I don't have control over. And I said, the ones that I don't have control over, I'm releasing to God. And the ones Amen. that I can do myself, then I do. And it ends up working out better than I expect, you know, most of the time. Because hey, isn't it less pressure on you, right? Yes, and exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, I want to be happy throughout the day as I'm doing things, right? And stressing is just the worst thing you can do for yourself because it creates resistance. It creates, you know, you just have this bad energy as you're interacting with people. It's just, you know, and it's, 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 plus we take ourselves a little too seriously when we do that. You know, we think yeah. we're, you know, we can, well, who controls the planet while it's orbiting, you know, in orbit? It's, we don't do that. Who makes the sun come up every morning? We don't do that. There's a greater power that's, you know, doing that. And we have to acknowledge that and be able to release the things that we can't control to that power. You know, Absolutely. Right? be Absolutely. grateful for everything that we do have. I think that's, that's very important also. And a lot of times, a lot of the stress comes from our own expectations, mm -hmm. our own deadlines that we put in um that make no sense right we'll put up a deadline right. oh i need to get this done by this 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 date mm -hmm. i'm like that it doesn't work like that no that's, not what, no that's not what god has in mind right um i would say perfect timing perfect flow and it's yeah. not my timing it's the timing of god and the universe no. absolutely so alice i have a five percent battery charge if we <laughs> hang up that means uh 
Yeah. My phone, oh. I didn't hang up on you. But just <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we did well. So thank you for taking the time and speaking with me. I always enjoy everything you have to say. And I, I, like I said, I love your, your mindset. I love how successful you are. I, I'm so happy to see you achieving everything that you do. So I thank appreciate you. that. Yeah, thank you. And we'll talk more in the future. Thank Absolutely. You. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.